Liz, we asked PJs why it is stopping puppy sales. Like its news releases, spokesmen simply say they want to support shelters. Could there be something, is there something they're not telling us? Could the treatment and production of animals by suppliers have been a concern? Is it just a good business and marketing strategy to get humane adoption uh, candidates in the door. What's really behind this move? Well, I think it's a it's a, actually a really good move and a smart move on the part of PJs. Um, partly, I think that there is a lot of uh, concern that's been raised over the years about where these animals come from, mm -hmm. what condition they were born in, how they were transported to the stores in which people buy them. And so there's a lot of concern about that. And I think, frankly, because a number of cities are now looking at uh, trying to ban the sale of dogs and cats in pet stores, that PJs simply saw the writing on the wall and didn't want to go through all the aggravation of fighting that and decided that they were going to give up their stores to animals that really needed uh, their help and those are animals that end up in shelters and pounds for whatever reason uh, that have no loving home to go to. Robert, you're a pet retailer. Are all of the pets for sale in every pet store in Alberta from reputable breeders that treat them well? Is there any question in your mind about how ethical some of them are? Well, I can certainly speak for my own store, and I can certainly speak for uh, Petland in, in Canada in general, which is a Western Canada-based uh, company. Uh, we source all of our animals locally. We inspect all of our breeders. Uh, we're very diligent. We have a 51-point inspection process, and uh, we're very, very careful uh, about the people that we deal with. We want to get good, healthy, happy animals, and we want to find great homes for them. Uh, as the director, as a national director for the Pet Industry Joint Advisory Council of Canada, we advocate for uh, licensing and inspection and certification of all pet stores, all breeders and all animal shelters so that we've got a, a blanket, uh, you know, uh, all of our animals are being protected and really I think where we're seeing the majority of our problems are from online breeders. We've got free online classified sites available now. If you look at uh, the classifieds in, in Calgary, you'll probably see well over right. a, a thousand dogs okay. available at any given time. You'll see the same thing in Edmonton. You'll see probably a heck of a lot more in Toronto. Uh, let me back up there for a second and just stick with the retail element for a moment, Paul. Sure. You say, uh, Paul, that a reputable breeder would never set foot in a pet store. Is there anything in Alberta to prevent puppy mills or at least operations we don't like from supplying retailers? Uh, we're, we're well connected with the, the breeding community in Alberta and basically Western Canada. Most of the people that I know don't go into stores that sell, that sell puppies. Um, Why? Some, they just don't agree with the practice. The biggest problem is not really whether you get your puppy from a pet store or online or even from a breeder. The biggest problem is are you getting the right dog for you? And so, you know, when I view this, I think it's great that PJ's is doing this. Um, more importantly, what's happening here is that one vehicle of an impulse buy is being removed from the marketplace. And so that helps those of us that are extremely passionate about, about our dogs to, to get the right dog to the right people, because that's what matters the most. Liz, you're among the group that says there should just never be a price on a pet's head at all. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I... The, the reason why we have humane societies, pounds and shelters is because uh, somewhere along the line we're producing more puppies uh, than there are people who want to give them homes for whatever reason. Um, and in the production of those animals, and it is, it, it is in many cases uh, a big production, that the animals have a number of different problems, behavioral problems, genetic problems, contagious disease problems, that people who go into the store and may buy these animals on a whim because they love the face in the window but are not uh, able to handle the, the problems that that animal may present um, means that we end up with animals in pounds and shelters that are not wanted for a whole variety of different reasons. I think that's just wrong. It would be a great world if there were no humane societies and shelters, but given that there are 
that's where we advocate that people go. Even though you don't know where, where that animal exactly came from, the reason for you going, that this is an animal in need, it's not part of a commercial operation, it's an animal in need of a home, and people go there for very different reasons and values. Um, and those are the kinds of values and reasons that we're looking for. So, Robert... Liz, I would never... I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, Robert, go ahead. I, I, I would never discourage anyone from uh, adopting a rescue animal into their home. But let's look at some of the statistics, Liz. Tw approximately 20% of animals in our community uh, across the country originate from rescues. Approximately 7% of, of our dogs originate through CKC Kennel Club breeders. Around 2% of the dogs in our country come from pet stores. So where are the other 71% of the dogs coming from? And are we not directing uh, a little bit too much attention to that 2%? Why don't we concentrate? on the 70% that is a real problem. Liz? Pet stores are responsible, I they're ethical, they're it, careful, and we don't promote, uh, we don't promote uh, impulse purchases. We want to place animals properly into good homes and we do a great job at it. I think, Robert, you likely do. I wonder about the entire industry. Liz, a quick uh, chance to respond to that before we go to commercial. I think the problem is that the pet stores attract people who um, in fact, do impulse buy. I talked to many people who go buy a window and said, I went to the, uh, I went to the um, shopping mall and just happened by a store, saw a dog I love, bought it for $1,500. Didn't yeah. even think about whether I, I could actually care for this animal. Uh, how Although, Robert, the problem is, hang on, Come hang, on. Hang, <laughs> hang on. So the, the, the problem is that the impulse buying spills over into the very things that Robert is talking about that is indeed a problem, which is online right. uh, sale of animals with no, absolute no control. And that's but I would also point out... I would also point out that in the states they license pet they license breeders through the US Department of Agriculture class A and class B dealers and it's right. an absolute disaster so I'm not I'm not convinced as Robert is that licensing is the way to go do you worry that other things that are worse could take the place of retailers. Uh, puppy mills, disreputable breeders, could they suddenly say, well, gee, there's no retail market, I'm going to jump in there, and now we're even in worse shape? I don't worry any more than I did before. Um, I think we've traded one venue possibly for another, but it still comes down to, to public education and people understanding what, the, what they are buying. And again, we've, re, you know, PJ's getting out of the business has removed one impulse buy. There are more propping up all the time, um, and that, that's the dilemma we face. As breeders, though, we also create some of those problems. We get so particular about who can own our dogs that it's a lot easier for someone to just leave us alone because we're too particular and go somewhere where it's easy, where it's right. simpler. So, so there's a there's a blend there somewhere. Uh, again, the bottom line though is the right dog to the right people, and and if if we can do that and we can increase our uh, public education, then some of these issues like Kijiji and stuff won't be as prevalent as they are. Liz, are you worried about the vacuum that the retailers are creating by leaving the market? Not really. I think as Robert points out, the vacuum is really tiny. Um, and so we're talking about a very tiny part of the market. I think we already face a severe problem, seri pretty serious problem in Canada with regard to uh, puppy mills, which I think people think of as fairly large operations down to people who are just irresponsible backyard breeders who are selling animals uh, to make a little extra money on the side. So all of those exist in provinces all across the country. I suspect that Quebec is the worst of all, um, given uh, some of my research, uh, mm. but certainly Ontario has its fair share. And in the West, there's our fair share too. And I hope uh, that the pet stores don't turn to those people uh, if if there's trouble getting animals from particular sources that they're they have right now. How does Alberta stack up when we look at enforcement, regulations, legislation, licensing? 
Well, the, the difficulty is with the, on the animal cruelty laws, the, the basic animal, well, animal Protection Act, I think it's called in Alberta, is that the industry is exempt from uh, being prosecuted for practices that are considered legal. I do, however, I don't think that's what Robert's talking about. He's talking about either having the province or the municipality license the pet stores. The problem that we found in Toronto in looking at licensing pet stores is that most of the suppliers are outside of the city so right. that in terms of having an impact about what animals come in and out of those pet stores, municipalities are very limited in what they can actually deliver. So I'm, unless I'm sorry, you're talking maybe... about provincial legislation, unless you're talking about amending the Animal Protection Act in some way, right. what I think is a really good way though is the, the Calgary Animal Service Model that is in Alberta and is absolutely probably the best in North America, maybe even the world, is a broad uh, education to people about being responsible pet owners, that you have to license your animals. If you don't, it's a $200 fine. Right. And it's absolutely no questions asked. And they really deliver the idea home. Okay. That if you take an animal, that, that is will... for that animal's life. Robert, let me let and Paul... And you need to be responsible for great... that animal for the duration yeah. of that time. Guys, let me let and Paul I think jump in here for a moment. Pet Paul, stores, I want to ask that... you... Liz, if Sorry, I can break Robert, in. But I don't Should think I just that's talk the to message that Robert, comes across to Robert people. and Liz, I, I need to, to let Paul have a word here for a second. Paul, we've got uh, shelters in on this now. They're going to be able to have room on the pet store floor. Is that Has that been a problem? Is that a problem we need to address? People who, well, yeah, we like the idea of helping an animal in a shelter, but for our family, we want the new dog from either the breeder or that pet store. Is there uh, an unwillingness to adopt animals that we need to have more people overcome? Well, I, I think adopting animals is a, is a good thing. I'm but still do concerned about... people want to do it? Well, I'm, I'm concerned about the unknown. And, okay, so I'm a dog breeder. Um, my latest puppy is now fifth generation for us. I know a lot about the dogs in my background. All the people that get my puppies get a full, you know, full history on where we've come from, what to expect on our dogs, health issues. So you still worry about shelter sort of adoptions? Stuff. Oh, yeah, I do, because I don't, you know, I, we have rescued dogs from the SPCA long before we had purebred dogs, and they were great dogs, but I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know what to expect as they got older, whether they might have some quirk. Um, maybe some of them had been mistreated, and I don't know what's in the background. And so. that might be something for each individual uh, municipality, each humane society to address within its own jurisdiction. For now, though, we're out of time. We appreciate the insight Great. and opinions of all of our guests. Thank you so much for joining us. Paul Bagnell is a dog breeder and president of the Edmonton Kennel Club. Robert Church is Alberta president for the Pet Industry Joint Advisory Council of Canada and a retail pet store owner. Liz White is director of the Animal Alliance of Canada and former director of the Toronto Human society.